to tell you now. In our time, people escaping tyrannical governments have floated away in balloons and sailed away in boats. They have tunneled and climbed and stowed away and walked hundreds of miles for a chance at a better life. What Arturo Sandoval did was take a deep breath and blow down the walls of oppression with his trumpet. This, this, this is so that they never who would be Muslim to Cuba and leave. Uh -huh. uh, I love Miami. I love, I love the weather here. I love the people. And Cuban musician Arturo Sandoval's adjusting to his new country, the place where jazz, the music he loves, comes from. Arturo Sandoval is a trumpet virtuoso. He combines the bebop style of Dizzy Gillespie with the high notes of Maynard Ferguson and then adds his own Cuban heritage to the mix. The result is pure Sandoval. Very, very, very few people know me around here. Only a few musicians, something like that. But I, I would like to be in contact with the people. I'd like to, uh, to, to have the, the chance to the people know a little bit about my music. And... Arturo was born in a small village outside of Havana. His interest in music developed spontaneously. Suddenly, one day, one day I will wake up and I say, I would like to be a musician. <laughs> <laughs> it's just weird like that, but it's true. Sandoval was playing in his first dance band when he was 12. A, a typical Cuban uh, uh, septet, right. they call a conjunto, conjunto, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Uh, it was really funny because the rest of the band, we were seven, but the rest of the band, another six, was a people around uh, 58, 65 years yeah. old, uh -huh. and I was 12. <laughs> it was a park of trumpet, it was funny. So <laughs> we played dancing around, and a year later, in 64, I saw the application in the newspaper for a scholarship mm -hmm. of a music school in Havana. Mm -hmm. I went in the school, in the school of music, National School of Music, for three years. Mm, learning um, classical music, only only classical okay. music. Yeah. While Sandoval studied classical trumpet in school, as time went on, jazz became his passion. He was voted Cuba's best instrumentalist three years in a row. Mm -hmm. was also a founding member of the Grammy Award-winning Cuban group Irikiri, which included saxophonist Paquito de Rivera. When he was growing up in Cuba, Sandoval steeped himself in the jazz tradition by listening to prized foreign recordings. He particularly remembers listening to an early record by Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie. I never heard any jazz before. It was the first, you know, the first thing you hear in jazz was Charlie Parker and Dizzy. Uh. Oh, I say, oh my goodness, what is this? I, I, I never be able to play that. Never. It's true. I never, I never will. My big impression always was and is and will be Dizzy. <laughs> you go? You go? Are you waiting some restaurant around here? They got to know each other when a jazz cruise brought Dizzy Gillespie to Havana. Arturo came up and couldn't speak English. But he had a mouthpiece and phone me. He played drum. He play a, he can play his hand. Like that, louder than most trumpet players can play it with the trumpet. Phenomenal. The way he is, his chops are built. Built up. This guy, he got, he got bull chops. 
Ochoa became his protege, and when Dizzy formed his United Nations band, he invited him to become a member. The Cuban government let him tour with Gillespie's band in Europe. That was to change Arturo Sandoval's life forever. Sandoval had thought of leaving Cuba many times, but he knew he would never do it without his wife and son. But last year, when he was touring with the Dizzy Gillespie United Nations Band, he convinced the Cuban government to let his family join him. They seized the opportunity, but not before some hair-raising moments. His wife and son were in London when she realized that people from the Cuban embassy were looking for them. And then she called me in Italy, very late in the night. And I said to her, you can keep in the, in the very safe place where nobody can find you, and uh, I call you back. And then I called to, to Washington. And I called there and say, uh, I need your help now. We are in trouble. The people... Arrangements were hastily made. His family went to the American embassy in London, and Sandoval went to the American embassy in Rome. Uh, I really appreciate it very much, very much what the American government did for me in that time. I never forget that. Now, almost a year later, Sandoval, his wife Marianella, and son Artu are adjusting to life in Miami. No. You know, the, the Cuban coffee is like, it's, it's like an Italian. Oh, yeah. they, they used to, to drink very, very little coffee uh -huh. with a lot of sugar, <laughs> a lot of sugar. <laughs> when Sandoval is at home, he practices the trumpet. Picks up the flugelhorn. And spends hours at the synthesizer. Practice the piano. It's, it's my pleasure. It's a pleasure. It's a, I, I said to my friend, when I, I'm a street and you know the old day or something, when I come back home, some people have beers to, to bring it down or something, I don't know. But when I get a keyboard, start playing a little bit, relax. It's perfect for me. But he frequently thinks of and worries about the family he left behind. I just talked with my mother this morning. Very early morning, she called me and says, God, talk to her, you know. But it's almost said, one year know, since Arturo Sandoval left Cuba, and he's been busy recording the soundtrack for the movie Havana and making his first album, Flight to Freedom. <laughs> just beginning to make his name known in this country. But when audiences hear him, they love him. <laughs> 